Hello, I am the Skilled Roy, and I am back with the Legends of Runeterra video that people have been asking me for what feels like centuries. Roy, what do you think Region 10 will be in Legends of Runeterra? And finally, I feel like I can talk about my opinion on it. But before we get started, I need you to know that all my favorite champions include those from the Void, such as Rek'Sai and Kha'Zix, and the region I personally want is Ishtal, which is why I'm coming to this discussion as a uniquely unbiased party. But just a quick warning, this video is going to contain a lot of data mined information from the game. This is less of a speculation video and more of a collection of evidence video. But first, let me tell you a little bit about myself and what we do here on the channel. For those of you who don't know, I am one of the many Legends of Runeterra speculators. I have at this moment in time guessed every single champion release in the correct release order for every single expansion. I was also the one who brought up the existence of Rek'Sai as the missing Shurima champion, and I was also the one who speculated on Malphite being in Targon instead of Shurima. Of course, I have made my predictions widely known across the entirety of Legends Runeterra discords, subreddits, and even in the comments sections of my own YouTube videos. Now, I don't tell you these things to brag, but rather to ensure that you know that I'm coming to this topic with sincerity and genuine in-depth discussions. I have data mined, researched, and scoured this topic for a little over a year now, and I think I finally have the answer to this. If you'd like to see my track record, I've linked in the description of this video as as well as a link to my Discord where I often work with you guys to figure out patterns and release windows. So what do I think Region 10 is going to be? Well, I think it's important to realize that because the debate has been going on for so long as Void versus Ishtal, I think we're going to start looking at some common assumptions that are gripping the player base and address them. I'm not going to take a side yet. I'm simply going to talk about some of the leaps in logic that I see a lot of the player base engaging in. And if you see this, you can now have a counterpoint to it because these are all sort of equally applied across each of the different regions. So. Assumption number one, X champion is in the game already, they wouldn't do Y region without them. This was the original logic used to eliminate Bandle City from contention. The logic goes, they wouldn't do Bandle City without Teemo or Lulu. Today, we see people who speak about the Void use this logic to eliminate Ishtal. After all, they say they wouldn't do Ishtal without Malphite. However, it's important to note that with Rek'Sai coming in Expansion 3 of Shurima, this logic now is obviously flawed. Each of the three most popular options have champions in other regions. This means you cannot eliminate a region based on this logic without eliminating all three of them, or alternatively, all three have equal chance. Assumption number two, X region has so much to develop on. Unlike Y region, it becomes increasingly obvious as I read the various discourse on region 10 that everyone is coming to the argument with a lots of personal bias. That's totally fine, of course. Everyone loves the various possible options for region 10, but it's important important to recognize that it is indeed bias. As someone who loves both Ishtal and Void, I can clearly tell you I would love to see either of them developed. Even a region like Bandle City, for example, has plenty to develop on. Just because you might not like the themes of, say, Ishtal or the characters of Void doesn't make it any more than your opinion on taste. To say that it's objectively a region why it can't be region 10 or not just isn't fair, especially because many people have the exact opposite feelings as to how you might feel. All of the three most popular possible options have a lot to develop on, and they're not nearly as developed as the current regions in the game. So please do not state as fact what region has more or less development as it often just evolves into personal taste more than anything else. Assumption number three, they can't put champions into X region because X region is closed off. This is actually a rather unique situation because all three of the most possible regions are regions that are largely closed off to the public. Ishtal is an enclosed society within a jungle, Bandle City is an enclosed society within the spirit realm, and the void is, well, in the void, which is not exactly welcome to people. Normally, I would use this same logic that I used in Fall Asleep 1, but go a step further. It's provable that the physical location of a region has nothing to do with a champion or follower's region. This this is proven using Riven and Elise, two cards currently in the game. Riven, a former Noxian who abandoned her post and now fights Noxians in Ionia, is still considered Noxian despite her allegiance changing. Elise, however, is a Noxian who now worships and serves the spider god Vilemaw, and she is considered Shadow Isles. You can see how these two contradict each other. It gets even worse with their followers. Hapless Aristocrat is a Noxian who chased after Elise to woo her, but he is Shadow Isles. Brutal Hunter came to Ionia to hunt down Riven, yet is still Noxian. The developers of Legends of Runeterra have chosen their champions and followers and regions to tell stories. But to say champions have to be tied to their physical location and thus their region might not be accessible is just not true given the current examples we have in the game. Assumption number four. The hint that Riot Dovagetti's mentioned is a card in the game. Let's look over all the cards. This is a bizarre one to me because Riot Dovagetti's didn't actually say that there's hints in the cards. He just said that there's hints out there about what it is. We have purposely yes. put hints out there mm. about what the 10th region is. And ah. to my knowledge, no 
the biggest hint no player has ever found yet. I haven't seen it on Reddit. I haven't seen it in a tweet or whatever. So the truth is out there. Never does he actually explicitly state it's a card in the game, just that the hints are somewhere out there. Also, on the topic of these hints, we know it has to be a very old hint. Dova Gettys in the chat in relation to the hint mentions that the hint is way older than eight months. Given the time when he said this, this means that the hint had to have been discoverable before even the Bilgewater launch. This likely means that the hint was from the beta time period. Then finally, the last assumption. It can't be X region because they only have Y number of champions on the universe page. It's clearly evident that the universe Universe page is out of date. Malphite is listed as Ishtal despite being in Targon in Le Legends of Runeterra. Teemo is listed as Bandle City despite being Piltover and Zaun in Legends of Runeterra. And finally, Rek'Sai is listed as Void despite being Shurima in Legends of Runeterra. Hell, neutral champions such as Nocturne and Kindred are given regions in Legends of Runeterra despite not having one on the Universe page. Most damning, some champions are still shown in their pre-rework locations such as Mordekaiser, who in the lore is closely related with Noxus and is actually still showing up as his former identity as a Shadow Isles champion. Thus, we cannot realistically treat the universe page of champions as a fair source as it is already inconsistent not only with Legends of Runeterra, but with even the current state of League of Legends champions. So, with those assumptions taken care of right off the bat, let me explain what I think Region 10 is. Please know again that as someone who loves Void Champions and is a huge fan of Ishtal, I am uniquely in a position where my bias doesn't blind me to the evidence. With that said, I think Region 10 is Bandle City. I know this is probably not what you want to hear, and I understand if you don't want to listen any further, but please, at least for posterity, I want you to show the evidence so that you might at least consider that Region 10 isn't just between Void and Ishtal. So, let's start with something that you yourselves can find. The hint that Dova Gettys spoke about, something that has been in the game since beta, which matches Dova Gettys' time frame, he mentioned that no one else has found the answer, and while this piece of evidence has been mentioned before, no one has brought it to this conclusion. I assume many of you are aware of the title screen of the game, Legends of Runeterra, a League of Legends card game. As a content creator, I often look for high quality assets of game titles so that I can use them in my video. So when you go today to the media page on the Legends of Runeterra website, you can download a clean render of the title font. This isn't anything special, but but something leapt out at me. The file name for the title was logo, no tag, no faction, ENG, RGB, PNG. This is how they decided to label this title. No tag is likely in reference to the no tagline, as this title lacks the usual, a League of Legends card game tagline. No faction, however, is a lot more puzzling. Factions aren't a term we really use in Legends of Runeterra, so I was a little confused. Naturally, the only thing that came to mind was factions could perhaps be the regions of the game. Sure enough, using the Wayback Machine and digging into old coverage of the beta of Legends of Runeterra, I found another version of this logo that they themselves had posted. The changes are somewhat subtle, but the file name is a lot more interesting. LOR logo, faction, ENG, RGB. Notice how this one doesn't say no faction, but rather says faction. This implies that the small engravings you see on this logo are representative of the factions of the game, as we know that they are then missing from the no faction version. The killer blow here is that we've also heard developers speak about the factions internally. We know this because the system they use for deck codes specifically mentions factions instead of regions. This means internally in their files, the regions are actually called factions. So what are the factions or regions that are on this title screen? Some look very obvious if you've seen any of the symbology around Legends of Runeterra, but some seem a little less so. However, it's actually really interesting because none of these are actually up for debate once you know where they're from. You see, each region actually has a unique symbol and sigil all of which you can see for yourself on the Universe page or on the League of Legends wiki. And each of these letters corresponds to a specific region sigil with a nearly one-to-one -one shape language. Let's go over each of them. The first R has the curvature of Ionia's dragon, as you can see here. The U has the plates of the wings of Demacia. The next N will skip for now. The first E has the gears and screws of Piltover and Zaun. The T is pretty clearly the sun disk of Shurima and the water pouring down. The second E was a little bit harder for people, but it's the shoulders of the Freljord sigil, just sideways. The second R is the Noxian axe from their sigil. The third R is the Bilgewater serpent from their sigil. And then the A is the mountain's peak from Targon. One thing to note though, the letters aren't the only thing with symbology. The line beneath them also changes on the no faction version. This one admittedly is the one that's most up to debate, but I personally believe it to be the Shadow Isles book at the bottom of their sigil to match the bottom of the Legends Runeterra title. 
All right, let's go back to that N. Given that every other region on this title is playable, it seems fair to state that whatever this N is, it's likely the final playable region. Riot put a lot of effort into designing this logo, and we can see their various processes on the different art stations. It wouldn't make any sense to have nine symbols be playable, and then one letter just randomly not be playable. In addition, these symbols also appear at the end of every single Tales of Runeterra that were made to promote the game. So let's bring up the three other sigils and compare them. Void, Ishtal, and finally, Bandle City. As you can see, the Bandle City icon is clearly the closest, as it has the signature double leaves. You might say, hey, Ishtal has leaves too, but if you look at the exact spacing of the two pairs of twin leaves, you'll see that they're exactly like Bandle City's sigil. Thus, I will conclude that based on a title screen that explicitly only has playable regions for Legends of Runeterra in it, that Bandle City sigil matches it the best, and thus Bandle City at least is the most likely choice. However, this is only one piece of a much larger puzzle. Let's start looking at the data. You see, one thing a lot of people will point out is that Bandle City actually had an icon in the beta files. It looked like this. These icons were the same ones you used to sort your collection of cards in the Collections tab. It's important to note that many of the beta icons were actually quite a bit different than what you see them to be today. Shrima and Targon, both for example, changed colors. This is interesting in particular because one of the only times they've referred to Region 10 is in a roadmap it looks something like this. This roadmap featured the three upcoming expansions, which we would come to know as Shrima and Targon, and then finally, Region Region 10. At the time of this roadmap being published, the region icons in the files actually matched the color schemes of the icons that would emerge. The orange matched the Shurima's icon at the time, and the blue matches the Targon icon at the time. The green, however, is a direct match for the Bandle City icon at the time. Obviously, Shurima didn't come up before Targon, so this evidence is less conclusive. But what's interesting is that both Shurima and Targon got updated icons before they became regions. Shurima's was slightly subtle, but Targon went from blue to purple. However, relatively more recently, Bandle City's icon in the files was also changed to an orange swirl with the same twin leaves as the title screen. This is also the same updated icon that Riot now uses for the Bandle City minor symbol. Now, speaking of changing internal assets, let me talk to you all about Cataclysm. No, not that Cataclysm, the original Cataclysm. You see, back in the day, Cataclysm was not the Jarvan spell, but was rather actually the name of the cat mech that Von Yip piloted in Pursuit to Perfection deck. It was renamed to Catastrophe shortly after launch, which is interesting as it was clearly renamed to give priority to the upcoming Jarvan champion. Interestingly enough, this isn't the only time it's happened, just one of the few times it's happened publicly. You see a lot of cards have beta names that are changed for one way or another, but today I want to talk to you about one in particular, Fae Guide. It was renamed late in development so that the public never actually saw this, but the information is also available on the wiki if you want to double check this. The original name for this card is actually Bandle Guide, which is very interesting. You see, one thing all Lulu cards specifically avoid mentioning is Bandle City outright, instead referring to the Bandle Woods that are explicitly in Ionia. It would make sense to rename something called Bandle Guide if Bandle City was then decided to be the 10th region of the game. Speaking of Lulu though, it is also very important that Yordles and Bandle City as a concept were both expanded upon very recently with the Don't Mess With Yordles cinematic. It coincided with a lore event developing the lore of Bandle City in Wild Rift. It also featured a full Yordle expansion in the game with four new Yordle champions. They all got new models in traditional Wild Rift fashion, and they even sometimes got little redesigns. It's undeniable that Riot clearly sees some value in Yordles when they had a Tales of Rune Terra short even before the current expansion, Shurima, has gotten theirs. It shows that Riot at least cares somewhat about Yordles. Additionally, there is one final piece of data mine information that simply makes the most sense for Bandle City as a possibility. You see, the mechanic that has been done nearly in every single card game ever, and that is dual region cards. You see, a while back, they changed the location of the region icons, and a developer even stated that one of the reasons they changed it was for an upcoming feature, and then right after that, these were data mined from the game's files. The updated borders for the game's champions, followers, spells, and prismatics, all for dual region cards. Now, in my opinion, I think this would make a lot of sense for the various Yordles who are spread out across the world, such as Poppy, Kled, and Kennen, and they can all now become dual region champions. In fact, if you factor in all the various Yordles who are currently in other regions besides Bandle City, Bandle City suddenly will have the most champions compared to the other two options. Then, just like how they retroactively changed some removal spells to suit a new card type, or some buff spells to have influenced the new card types, they can then retroactively make Teemo and Lulu Bandle City dual region champions. And if this is still a little too far-fetched for you and you still don't consider Bandle City an option, well, Riot themselves disagree with you. You see, just recently when Swim ran a poll for his audience of what region they thought Region 10 was going to be, either Ishtal or 
Boyd, Riot Dovagetis entered the chat and said, hey, why doesn't your poll have Bandal City? Then also a while back, game director Andrew Yip mentioned that they would be willing to do a second Teemo to fill out a hypothetical Bandal City and that nothing was off the table. It's clear that Riot wants us to continue to consider Bandal City as a possible option. It's only because we as a fan base have written it off that the conversation continues to be dominated as Ishtal versus Void. This to me is the crux of the issue. The fan base has spent so much time arguing between Void and Ishtal that Bandal City isn't ever actually being mentioned, and thus these possible pieces of evidence are constantly being ignored. I want you to imagine the possibility that it actually is Bandal City, and you were a developer. Wouldn't you try to prematurely mitigate the damage? Wouldn't you try to warn the people the best you could to keep an open mind on each possible option? Riot Dovagetis has essentially done just that. Uh, I, I know that there's a lot of posts on Reddit where people want it to be the Void, but I think that those people should really ask themselves the question of like, how many Void champions exist in Legend of Le in League oh. IP? The, the answer is not that many. Um, oh. And so if we do the Void, they should set themselves for the expectation that there's probably going to be a lot of not void champions in it if we did that or we might not do it at all because you know there aren't enough and so i'm not going to say what it is i'm just saying like there's a lot of people who who make like void they, they have all these predictions which is awesome i love the prediction stuff about the void but you know there are lots of yeah. expectations that are building that people are building for themselves and i'm like whoa like do you people not understand there's only seven void champions and one of them has already accidentally leaked and not in the fifth expansion. So like, you know, you swim initially was completely sold on void, but moved to Ishtal. And then in a big Ishtal thread, Dovagetti spoke to the fan base and explained that no matter what region 10 is, your favorite champions and stories will arrive in the game. And this is the message I want to state to you all. If region 10 is Bandle City, and it isn't Ishtal or Void, which the fans have been arguing over for the past year, I want you to know that they have made a commitment for all champions to make it in. Hell, even if region 10 is Ishtal or Void, all of us have to understand that eventually all of our favorite characters will make it to the game. So even if it's not Ishtal, Void, Bandle City, or hell, even if it's a KDA region, we have to trust that Riot will come through on their promise. Hello, thank you so much for watching to the end of the video. Uh, I know this was kind of a uh, sort of controversial take, I know, on what Region 10 is going to be, but I really do believe it. Um, and just to show you that, how I'm going to do this is this. In honor of Region 10, if Region 10 is not Bandal City, I will be giving away 10 boards uh, to random people that are commenting in this vi YouTube video. I'll probably DM you to say, hey, what's your username? I was wrong. Here's your free board of either Void or Ishtal or whoever knows whatever Region 10 ends up being. Uh, that way you guys know I am dead serious about this. That's just over $100, I believe. Something some amount, I'll calculate that later. I'll Honestly, big thanks to all sorts of people who've helped me with this. A lot of people have helped uh, build this theory up from the ground over the last year. And uh, I really couldn't do it without any of you. Like the amount of people who supported me in the chat, the amount of people who supported me in my Discord, people who gave me links to different interviews where devs mentioned certain things. Uh, big shout outs to Swim as well for uh, largely driving the, the, the discussion recently, thanks to getting interviews with Dovagetis. Now, of course, I gotta plug my stuff in case this somehow does actually happen and I'm not just a crazy person. <laughs> um, of course, if you guys wanna catch me streaming or uh, on my YouTube, obviously you're on it right now. But if you wanna see me on my stream, it's also gonna be uh, typically every Thursday, Friday, I'm gonna try to stream. Uh, and that'll be around roughly, I wanna say like five o'clock EST time. Uh, and of course you can join my Discord if you guys wanna talk about any more leaks or information or data mining or just my own theories on what I think next is coming. I think I have a pretty good track record right now and assuming this is correct, <laughs> my real goal for this video was to ensure that people understand that there's more than just the two options out there. This, this horror scenario started playing out in my head where the two different camps of Ishtal and Void were fighting off against each other, and then like when it was revealed to not be either of them, they were gonna go ballistic and like severely hurt the community. And I really just want you guys to know that like as because the riot has promised us that we're gonna get every champion, and they said that we're gonna get them done in a great way, we have to give you give them faith. Because even even if it isn't Bandle City, like I'm saying it is, right? It, let's assume it is either Ishtal or Void, a large portion of the player base is going to be disappointed one way or another here. And I'm just trying to mitigate it now so people can at least start thinking, okay, maybe there's another option here beyond just the two that we've been sort of going back and forth on over the last six months. And honestly, there was so much more I could talk about. There's a lot more like more damning theories for Ishtal and Void specifically, but this video is not about like crushing other people's uh, speculations or ideas, but more so about 
presenting that there is a third option that people really aren't really looking too, too much at yet. And I think that that's what's most important about this video overall. Um, hey, and if it's correct, that's great. But like my, again, my main goal here is to sort of a uh, prep the player base, so to speak, because uh, I really do believe that it is Bandle City and I don't think that it could be anything else, realistically speaking. Again, like I said, I am someone who, who, who loves a lot of the Void Champions, and I am a huge fan of Ishtal as a concept. Like, holy shit, that concept is so cool. All right, well, that's enough rambling from me. Um, so sorry, I didn't really script this nicely. I just wanted it to be really authentic and genuine with uh, thanking you to come to watch the end of the video. Uh, I will see you all next time. Thank you so much again for watching. Uh, peace out.